asked you to do this. Are there any questions in the audience? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Olivia. Uh, when you were doing Grease with uh, John Travolta, there was a lot of on-screen chemistry happening between the both of you. I'm just wanting to know if off-camera there are any sparks. Uh, actually, yeah, there were sparks. There was chemistry, definitely, but it seemed that John always had a girlfriend and I had a boyfriend and it just never quite worked. And I think that's probably why the chemistry did work, because I think if we'd been going out, it might have created problems. But, no, we did have a definite chemistry. And we're still good friends. He's a lovely guy. Lovely guy. Hello, Olivia. Hi. Um, in the movie Xanadu, um, what was it like working with Gene Kelly and how long did you have to practice for all your skating scenes? Oh, good, qu good questions. Gene Kelly, of course. What, how lucky have I been in my life? I've got to dance with two of the greatest dancers and guys in the world, Gene Kelly and John Travolta. <laughs> so, Gene Kelly, um, you imagine the fear I felt when they said, you are going to tap dance with Gene Kelly, and I'd never tap danced in my life. So I scrambled to lessons immediately, and I think I had about six weeks of tap before we started rehearsals for that. And he was, he was great. He was really patient, and um, he actually directed that scene. He wanted it, of course, my luck, he wanted it to be in one take, so I really had to learn it really well because I couldn't make a mistake. But he, he was lovely. He was lovely to work with a true professional, and he could still really dance. Very, very well. He was wonderful. Thank you. Okay. You asked me about the roller skating. Um, sorry, I passed on that because I have horrible memories of it because uh, on about, I was being taught by this amazing roller skater and when we were filming the song, suddenly I fell really hard and I cracked my tailbone and I had to keep filming and it was really painful. They rushed me to the hospital and they did an x-ray and then they put me on this ice donut <laughs> and so between takes I would sit on this ice donut and then kind of pull myself together and so I haven't roller skated since that movie, big surprise. <laughs> Olivia, you always seem to have such wonderful poise and I just wonder when you started out, did you ever have stage fright or nerves and what have you done over the years to, to deal with all that side of performing and being in the public eye? It's a very good question. I had terrible nerves. I was very, very anxious always. In fact, um, my knees, I used to wear long dresses so you couldn't see my knees tremble. Um, but no, I was very nervous. In fact, it kind of spoilt performing for me when I was very young. Then I guess with experience, I got more and more used to it. And then I think going through the experience that I went through 10 years ago of my illness and everything and going through divorce and stuff, I kind of put everything in perspective and realised that, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You forget words. I worked with John Farnham, I'm not worried anymore. So. <laughs> I'd like to ask you about the Eurovision Song Contest. Oh, would you? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you have to? Yes. Um, yes, I will. Uh, we all, well, a lot of us know that you didn't like that one song that you sang. No, I didn't. Um, of the other five, if you could have uh, sung one of those, which one would it have been? That's a good question. I, from what I remember, I loved a song called Angel Eyes. Yes, that's yeah, my favourite. That was... <laughs> That, I thought that was a really beautiful yeah, song. Beautiful. So, you know, with, uh, but usually with the Eurovision Song Contest, they pick the Um Papa yeah. one, so I wasn't surprised that. Oh, what's it called again? I've, I've Long Live Love. Long Live, thank you. <laughs> forgotten it. I wonder why I forgot the title. Uh, that's why they chose that one, yeah. I greatly respect your environmental work and the cancer work you do. And just speaking about ABBA. Frida from ABBA is a, a great environmental campaigner, etc. And I just was thinking that perhaps yourself and Frida doing a duet together would be very Great idea. powerful. Great idea. I'll call her tomorrow. Good. <laughs> I know the number. Do you know how to reach her? <laughs> yes, I do. I'll tell you later. I do. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I um, do. <laughs> can you tell? T-shirt. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, having lived in both America and Australia, what would you say are the main differences between the two countries? I guess... Um, both countries are home to me in different ways. Australia just has those, the smells, the bird songs, the sounds, um, the bush, things that, you know, don't have the same meaning for me in America because I, I didn't grow up there. So I think it's those things, the things that you can't replace um, when you leave. And the people, the, the, the good humour. I love it, the Aussie humour and, you know, taking the mickey out of everything. I like that. <laughs> Not taking yourselves too seriously is what I learnt from, it, from being brought up here. And I, I miss that. But America has some great attributes and it's been really good to me too. But they're very, just very different. Hi, Olivia. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, you've done so much in your life, environmentally, musically, physically, personally. Out of 
all of them, if you could choose one to relive, which one would it be? The moment to relive? Oh, goodness, that's a very good question. Well, I'd say, you know, the most important moment was when Chloe was born. Yeah. Uh, that would have to be it, I suppose. I mean, there's nothing more thrilling than having a child and that moment, and I'll never forget that moment. And um, I've had a lot of other moments, but that would be the one that's the most important to me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.